Hi there. In this video, we use hands-on code demos in Python to provide you with a working understanding of what the eigen decomposition of a matrix is and how we make use of it in machine learning. The eigen decomposition of some matrix A is given by this formula here. But instead of uh, working through the formula just now, we'll do that in a hands-on code demo in a moment. Before we do that, let's talk about um, how an eigen decomposition comes in handy. So the decomposition of a matrix into its eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are represented in these symbols here, I promise you, um, this reveals characteristics of the matrix. For example, the matrix is singular if and only if any of its eigenvalues are zero. We actually already discussed this uh, concept in detail in the preceding video on determinants and eigenvalues. In addition, under specific conditions, and you can see section 2.7 of Goodfellow et al.'s 2016 book, Deep Learning from MIT Press, for details of those specific conditions, um, but they're relatively common conditions. Uh, and under those conditions, we can optimize quadratic expressions using eigenvalues. So the maximum of some function x, so we'll talk a lot about um, the uh, optimization of functions in the calculus um, section that is separate in this Machine Learning Foundation series. And if you're following along chronologically, it comes after these linear algebra um, topics. But um, for those of you who are already aware of this concept of the maximum and minimum of a function, well, the uh, maximum of a function under these specific conditions is equal to the largest eigenvalue. And the minimum of a function is equal to the smallest eigenvalue under those same conditions. All right, let's jump onto that hands-on code demo now so that um, you can start to learn about what this eigen decomposition is exactly. We've talked about how it involves eigenvectors and eigenvalues, but that's not immediately clear from the equation just yet. All right, in our linear algebra two notebook, we're now in the uh, section titled eigen decomposition. <laughs> um, so the eigen decomposition of some matrix A is given by this formula, which we saw on the slides a moment ago. But now let's talk about what's going on here. So in this equation, V is the concatenation of all of the eigenvectors of A. So this is the same as we had earlier in many examples already in this notebook. So each column of V is a separate eigenvector. Okay, so once we know what uh, v and v inverse is, the only variable left for us to understand is this one here in the middle. So it's a little bit of an unusual mathematical symbol. It's the uppercase lambda. So we're used to seeing the lowercase lambda uh, very often, the Greek letter, but this is just the uppercase version. And this variable, lambda, is the diagonal matrix diag lambda with a lowercase lambda here. So as we've been doing throughout this notebook, this lowercase lambda represents a vector of all of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And so all of those eigenvalues are positioned along the main diagonal of this diagonal matrix. And as is always the case with diagonal matrices, all of the other entries are zero. Check out the diagonal matrix video earlier on in this Machine Learning Foundation series if you're unfamiliar with this concept. Uh, note that the convention is to arrange the lambda values, the eigenvalues within the uh, lambda vector, in descending order. As a result, the first eigenvalue and its associated eigenvector may be a primary characteristic of the matrix A. Okay, so let's now show that this equation is true. Let's use this uh, matrix here. 
Um, this was used earlier as a matrix X, but now we're going to use it as A. Um, and it has nice, clean integer eigenvalues, which is why I'm picking it. So we can use the numpy eig method here, as we've done a number of times already in this notebook, to identify the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A. So the eigenvectors are right here. So we have two eigenvectors, first eigenvector, second eigenvector. And so that gives us our first variable here. To get the inverse of v, we can use the numpy inv method, which we've used earlier in these machine learning foundations as well for matrix inversion. So voila, there is our inverse. And now the only thing left is to calculate lambda here. So as we know, it's a diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues along the main diagonal. In order to create that diagonal matrix, we can use the convenient diag method from NumPy and just pass our vector of eigenvalues right in there. And yeah, so there you go. We've got our eigenvalues 2 and negative 1 are our first and second eigenvalues respectively along the main diagonal of this 2 by 2 diagonal matrix. And now we can confirm that by performing these uh, series of matrix multiplications of lambda times the inverse of v and then v times that product gives us our original matrix A before we identified its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So there you go. That is the eigen decomposition. So the eigen decomposition is not possible with all matrices. And in some cases where it is possible, the eigen decomposition involves complex numbers instead of straightforward real numbers. So complex numbers are ones with um, uh, like a square root of a negative. Um, but in machine learning, we are typically working with real symmetric matrices, which can be conveniently and efficiently decomposed into real number only eigenvectors and also real only eigenvalues. If A is a real symmetric matrix, then the eigen decomposition is even simpler than before because we can use a transpose instead of an inverse. So in this case, Q is analogous to V from the previous equation. However, it's special because it's an orthogonal matrix. And you should be well aware of orthogonal matrices now uh, from earlier in the series. You can check out the orthogonal matrix video if you're unfamiliar with the concept. All right, so let's create a real symmetric matrix. So here we go. It's symmetric when we flip over the main diagonal. Uh, we get the same matrix again if we transpose it. So now when we identify the eigenvalues and eigenvectors using the eig method, great, here are our eigenvalues. And here they are in a diagonal matrix, lambda, with a capital L. Uh, and we have our Q, which is our two eigenvectors, one and two. And we can confirm that our original A is equal to Q lambda Q transpose. Here's that math in Python format. And it restores for us our matrix A. So this is uh, convenient that real symmetric matrices are common in machine learning because it is very cheap to compute the transpose of a given matrix relative to computing the inverse of a given matrix. As a quick aside here, we can demonstrate that Q is an orthogonal matrix um, because as we saw uh, in the orthogonal matrix video earlier, QT, Q, Q transpose, Q 
is equal to Q, Q transpose, which is equal to critically the identity matrix. So when we perform matrix multiplication of Q transpose Q or Q, Q transpose, we get an identity matrix. In this case, we have 2.2 times 10 to the negative 17 in lieu of zeros, but that is just a, a minor computational rounding error. You can regard these to be zeros. They are extremely close to zero. And so yes, this is an identity matrix, and so is this. All right, as some exercises to get you more familiar with the content that we just covered, everything that we just did was in NumPy. You should be able to do everything that we did here in NumPy in PyTorch as well. So try using PyTorch to decompose this matrix P into its components, uh, V lambda and V inverse, and confirm this eigen decomposition formula. And then use PyTorch to decompose the symmetric matrix S into its components, Q lambda and Q transpose, confirming that this eigen decomposition of symmetric matrices is true as well. So you have the slight added twist here of having a three by three matrix. So it has three eigenvectors um, when you identify those and three eigenvalues instead of two, like we just had in NumPy. But other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. And all of the PyTorch methods that you'll need, we've already gone over in this notebook. So I'm not going to work through the solution with you. It should be pretty straightforward to do it yourself by looking at what we did in NumPy. And you'll, of course, know that you have the right answer when uh, you prove that these equations are true. Cool, that's it. That concludes all of our eigenvector-related theory. To wrap things up, in the next video, we detail a wide range of real-world eigen decomposition applications. To be sure not to miss the next tutorial in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. You can follow me on Twitter too, if that's your social medium of choice. See you next time.